Hello everyone, in this update, SpaceX Starship SN1, cause of the explosion, work on SpaceX Starship SN3 about to start, and SpaceX going military, Star Trek Starfleet, here we come. I'll talk about what happened and expand a bit on what happened to Starship SN1 later on in the video, but right now I'd like to concentrate on what lies ahead for SpaceX. Starship SN2, although almost half completed, the bottom will be stripped down and pack component responsible Starship SN1 failure will undergo extensive testing, which could take a few weeks. However, now that this is clear which part failed, SpaceX will test the components to its breaking point. Of course, there might have been manufacturing issues as well, quality standards or variation of things. Work on Starship SN1 continues nonetheless. The SpaceX began stacking Starship SN1 sections with the Starship bottom bit where engine and tank are joined to be tested extensively in coming weeks. After all, SpaceX will try to keep its predetermined schedule, which will see first Starship test launch of sorts 150 meter hop before Easter, which is now in less than 40 days. To ensure this happens according to schedule, SpaceX will start work on Starship SN3 within the next few days. The fact Boca Chica facility now can build components almost on an industrial scale, work on fleet of Starship can commence. And despite the slight setback, SpaceX could be working on Starship SN3 before this week is out. SpaceX plans to spend much of 2020 to test Starship and all its systems, including Raptor engine for which new stand was erected, making job a lot easier for SpaceX staff. SpaceX Boca Chica facility is growing rapidly and expanding really fast. As soon there will be uh, three additional clean buildings where SpaceX plans to manufacture Starship components. Sadly, this also means once all the manufacturing buildings are erect, we won't be graced with images of Starship components screwed around, awaiting their integration into the future Starships. Elon Musk is keen on getting a clean environment where Starships are built similar to SpaceX Falcon 9 facility in California. With a workforce now several hundred strong at Boca Chica, there is a good chance SpaceX will complete clean facility for future Starship builds by end of May, when I expect Starship SN3 will be also completed. Current workforce has gained massive experience from building Starships MK1, and SN1. SpaceX is now practically churning out parts of future Starships at an incredible rate. Question if SpaceX could produce two Starships per month at Boca Chica facility once this facility is fully operational? Should not even be questioned, even with current facility which is barely a quarter the size of planned facility on this side, can probably churn out a single Starship every single month. And as to unscheduled disassembly of Starship SN1, uh, confirming suspicion, Elon Musk quickly implied that the Starship failure originated in or around its thrust structure or thrust pack. Further noting that Starship SN2, already in the middle of production, will be stripped to the bare minimum to test the thrust pack. In essence, it sounds like Starship SN2 will become SpaceX's third intentional tank test following the footsteps of two smaller Starship tanks built and pressurized to failure to verify the quality of Starship manufacturing. So what is a thrust pack, you might wonder? Well, the thrust pack is a ring-like structure. Well, it looks more like an alien spaceship if you ask me. But basically, it's a part on which all six Raptor engines are attached to. The ring structure is made to withstand heavy forces and pressures exerted on it, as it supports up to six powerful rocket engines underneath, as well as up to 300 tons of stuff on top of it. So it has to be made of really strong material. Sadly, this section failed and might pose an issue for Starship design. 
this shouldn't be an issue for single-use rockets but for heavy lifting and reusable rockets might be an issue I do wonder if Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin are paying attention to Starship and lessons learned from it. Testing thrust pack extensively next phase of short tests SpaceX will perform in coming weeks and although SpaceX might have already looked at alternative design using much stronger material that can withstand much greater stress Changes to Starship design and in particular thrust structure will be imperative for successful Starship orbital test. No doubt SpaceX will already have looked at this issue and implement changes. As I've said, SpaceX learns from mistakes, build, test, fail, fix, repeat, all over again. Whatever the case, work on Starship SN2 continues. And I expect after extensive testing and slight redesign of travel component, Starship SN2 will be ready for its own testing, which could commence as early as March 21st. First day of spring, progress on Starship is progressing fast, with very likelihood that work on Starship SN3 could start by 10th of March, if not before. SpaceX needs two Starships, just in case of failure such as one recent witnessed. With two Starships, there is little chance of delays to tight schedule set by Elon Musk. Sam might be wondering, what is the cost of building Starship? Well, Starship won't be cheap, as some might hope. However, SN1 Starship was built cheaply. Relatively speaking, the labor costs were around 2.5 million, or around one-fifth of the cost of actual Starship SN1 which comes around $12.5 million in total. The fully operational Starship, even built on cheap, will still come at around $25 million. Relatively cheap, I know, but actual cost for manned version of the Starship won't be cheap. If my calculations are correct, manned version of the Starship will be in the region of $80 to $100 million. Even if built on cheap, every component on manned version will need to be tested and certified, which can take time. The reason why perhaps we won't see manned version of Starship before 2022 or around Starship SN20. In other news, SpaceX has caught an idea of military Starship or Starship that will be used by the US Space Force, new branch of US military. Space Force is keen on SpaceX technology, as it gives US military a considerable edge over China. The fact US will be capable of placing large payloads into low Earth orbit or beyond almost on a weekly basis once Starship becomes operational should be unsettling for China and Russia. Both nations are also looking to develop their own versions of Super Heavy reusable rockets. However, both nations plan to launch their respective rockets in mid-2030s by which point SpaceX plans to build at least 100 Starship, if not 1,000. US Air Force is heavily involved in development of SpaceX Raptor rocket engine, and thus the Starship itself. With US Air Force spending in the region of 250 to 320 million dollars in, in past seven years on development of Raptor rocket engine. It is only logical for US military to utilize SpaceX capability. Should Elon Musk push idea of military starship, no idea what to say personally as I oppose militarization of space. However, being pragmatist, I realize that my opinion do not matter as other nations and other interests do not care what us mortals think. However, if we're going to have Space Force, I hope it is something like a Starfleet in Star Trek. Me being a Star Trek fan and a massive Trekkie, I would support the idea of such space force. So what do you think guys? Is a space force or militarization of space something that we should be doing? And what about other nations that are also keen on militarization of space, such as Russia and China?
Thank you for watching and please subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Links in the description.